Celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona Electric Vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on primetime, Congressman Michael Siniklis and Sabrina Salas Matanani pick up their packet confirming their gubernatorial bid. Isaiah Uggen has the story. Plus, more COVID restrictions coming down while officials keep an eye on developing variants. Daniel Perez has the latest. And the NMI Senate hears the motion to dismiss articles of impeachment. These stories and more, right here, right now, on your news leader. Half a day and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Primetime. I'm Tomas Maglonia. Glad you can join us. In Decision 2022 headlines, Congressman Michael Sanicholas and seasoned journalist Sabrina Salas Matanani picked up their gubernatorial candidate packet Tuesday morning at the Guam Election Commission in Tamuning, announcing their intentions to run on the Democratic side of the ballot. This gubernatorial candidacy announcement comes just with four months left until polls open up for the primary election. KOM's Isaiah Uggen leads us off tonight. It's official. Guam delegate to the U.S. House of Representatives Michael San Nicholas and former managing director of news and local productions at KUM Communications Sabrina Salas Matanani are running for governor and lieutenant governor of Guam this August. It's time for us. It's time for us to put this all to rest, this kind of politics, this kind of neglect of our people. How do we have a gubernatorial election four, year, four months in from two different tickets having declared and no one's talking about the people? How do we have a primary election less than five months away and no one's talking about the people? We're going to bring that conversation. We're going to talk about the people. We're honored. We're really honored to be able to have this opportunity. And we're especially honored to be able to focus this conversation on where it matters, the people of Guam. San Nicolas is in his second term for Congress and served three terms as a senator at the Guam legislature since 2013. Solis Metanani has been a public servant and long-term news broadcaster at KUAM since 1997. She stepped down from her role on Monday. Island residents are questioning why Solis Metanani decided to run after being with the company for more than two decades. I'm tired of the negative politics. I'm tired of hearing about good people that want to step up, right, and run for public service, but in fear of political retribution, fear of attacks on their families, they're scared. Step away. I'm scared. I'm not going to lie. I am terrified, right? But at the end of the day, I lost my job, I lost my car, I lost my health insurance, I lost everything. But the risk is worth it. Meanwhile, San Nicholas had an ethics complaint filed against him in 2020. Allegations that he had an affair with one of his staffers and campaign finance violations. That investigation is ongoing. He says they will continue to, quote, maintain the position that we're not going to discuss that process, end quote, as it's been continuously under investigation for years. On the Democrat side of the ballot, San Nicholas Paulus Matanati will be going head-to-head -head with Leon Guerrero Tenorio for a seat at Adelope come August, while former Governor Felix Camacho and Tony Ada will be running as Republicans. What we need is for all of you to also register to vote. That is the only way we're going to win. Reporting for KUAM News, Guahu Isaiah Ugin. Shortly after the announcement, the Camacho Ada team released a statement saying, quote, We welcome the decision by Guam delegate Michael Sinicholas and Sabrina Salas Matanani to run for governor and lieutenant governor of Guam. Voters will have an option for leadership at Adelup, end quote. Meanwhile, Governor's Communications Director Crystal Pacos and Augustine said, quote, Our democracy empowers any eligible member of our community to run for elected office, and we look forward to productive and positive civic engagement. She referred any future questions to campaign chairman Francis Santos, Governor Leon Guerrero, and Lieutenant Governor Tenorio remain focused on leading Guam's recovery, moving our island forward and securing our path to prosperity for the people of Guam. To this end, as our administration continues its work for our people, inquiries regarding campaign matters are directed to the campaign committee. And outdoor mass mandates are finally lifted. However, one epidemiologist says it's important to remain vigilant. Daniel Perez reports. Effective today, mask wearing is no longer required while outdoors. Additionally, social gathering and social distancing restrictions have also been lifted. 
Although it's welcome news for most island residents, others are still doing it to protect themselves and their families. Lead epidemiologist Dr. Annette David confirmed that the island will be just fine, even with the outdoor mask mandate lifted. In terms of the risk, uh, when you're talking about outdoor masking, you really want to prevent community transmission. So the things that are important are how widespread is the virus. We know from the data that that's been going down, so that's really good. And then also, when you're outdoors, the ventilation is really at the best it can be, and so that lowers your risk even more. Guam continues to remain in the low-risk category, and as Governor Lou Leon Guerrero said last night, if the island continues to sustain that category, indoor mask mandates will be lifted as well. But according to Dr. David, it's important now more than ever to remain on guard as the World Health Organization is tracking multiple subvariants of COVID-19. We were familiar with Omicron 1, which was the original cause of our latest surge, and then Omicron 2, uh, BA.2, BA which uh, really caused our, our surge to hang around for as long as it did. BA.1 and BA.2 have somehow merged to create a recombinant variant and that is the one that people are calling Omicron XE. That's your iPhone update. That's your SARS-CoV-2 update. But you also have uh, in, in the radar of the WHO, Omicron 3, Omicron 4, and Omicron 5. So they're keeping track of that, of those three. And then in the U.S., in particular in New York, they are looking at sub-variants of Omicron 2. So there's Omicron 2.12 and Omicron 2.12.1. So as you can see, it's not just one variant. There are several of them that are starting to show up. Dr. David added that Omicron 2.12 and 2.12.1 have been responsible for 90% of the cases in New York. The two subvariants of Omicron BA.2 are also thought to be about 20 to 30 times more infectious than the stealth subvariant BA.2. As for Omicron XE, it has now been found in Japan and Hawaii, but currently it is not thought to come with any new symptoms. The same precautions of combating the virus still apply, and that is vaccinations and boosters, mask wearing, hand washing, and social distancing. Other modes of protection the island has against COVID include the monoclonal antibodies and the COVID antiviral pills. Daniel Perez reporting for KUAM News. It's a video gone viral. A man caught on surveillance footage attacking a child riding his bike in Dededo. Hannah Devonzo reports. The images left some sick to their stomachs. Just before 10 a.m. Monday, surveillance footage at NCS Market in Dededo caught a man kicking a child off of his bike in the store's parking lot. And he didn't stop there. The man now identified as 41-year-old Oliver Jason Catapang de Soto also repeatedly kicked and punched the minor and stomped on the bike while the child was beneath it. The footage shows the child in severe pain and crying. Injuries reported were bruising, however, his parents refused any medical attention. DeSoto was arrested and according to court documents, he stopped when a witness got involved and chased him into the store. According to an employee who wished to remain anonymous, DeSoto often shopped at NCS Market and never bothered anyone. It was also pretty common to have children riding their bikes out front. However, the attack comes with no surprise, as DeSoto has a long history of arrest dating back to the year 2000. And according to one court record, DeSoto was diagnosed with several mental health issues and had his probation for his convictions transferred to mental health court. DeSoto is now facing charges of assault, aggravated assault, and child abuse. We reached out to GPD spokesperson for comment and have yet to hear back as of news time. Hannah DeBonzo for KUAM News. Over in the NMI, a historic Senate hearing seeks to answer the governor's request to dismiss the articles of impeachment entirely, essentially asking that the trial of Governor Ralph Torres end before it even begins. Here's the latest developments. What can I say? At this juncture, it is what it is. That tone-setting phrase by Representative however, Karina Magofnia echoing on the Senate floor on historic impeachment hearing for Governor Ralph Torres's motion to dismiss the articles of impeachment. She could have been the House prosecutor, but the trial is moving forward without one and without an impeachment record after failed negotiations to amend the Senate's rules. That it's not the Senate's doing that we're purposely proceeding on without an impeachment prosecutor. 
Also noticeably absent are Senators Justo Quiragua and Vinny Sablon, who's Torres' running mate. Both were accusing themselves from all hearings due to conflicts of interest. The public interest is overwhelming, with over two hours of public comments at the start, one person calling the process political crucifixion. I'm here to respectfully and sincerely ask you to please issue your vote of no to move forward with this impeachment. Please, please, please let us decide our governor, not the House of Democrats or independents. House lawmakers also filled the gallery for public comments of their own, challenging the Senate's actions and accusing them of not playing by their own rule book and allowing the governor to file a motion to dismiss outside of the written timeline. Democratic lawmaker Tina Sablon, who's running for governor and whose own ethics are being questioned for her role in the House's investigation, weighed in. It's classic deflection, but also revealing. It shows so much about the governor's lack of actual defenses against the volumes of evidence pointing to his abuses of power and misuses of public funds. And the governor's attorneys didn't pull punches, painting a picture of failure by the House, alleging a rush to judgment, House overreach, and sidestepping the law. All of the articles of impeachment lodged against Governor Torres repeatedly break the law. And any one of these violations, and to be clear, they are not technicalities, they are direct violations of the law. Senate President Jude Hofschneider made clear that a decision on the motion won't be made today. Meanwhile, the governor faces parallel legal battles in court challenging a legislative subpoena and facing criminal charges filed by the Attorney General. Tomas Manglotnia for KOM News. The Senate will hold a session on Friday at 10 a.m. to decide on the motion to dismiss. So to come on your news leader, United's efforts to support the return of Guam's tourism economy and Guam Department of Education's plans for summer school. These stories and more coming up next. Off a day, I'm the owner of Guam's largest tourist attraction group. The pandemic's been very tough for all of us and particularly for my team members. So I'm really appreciative and grateful for the PUA assistance to our team members and more recently, the SVOG federal grant that allowed us to reopen these facilities and re-employ everyone at a critical time when PUA ended. From myself and my team, on behalf of all of us, thank you for the federal funds that allowed us to reopen. The federal fund you provide saved many, many jobs. Thank you. Thank you so much. We employ about 35 technicians for our shows. Thank you for the federal funds that kept us going. Thank you for helping with the federal funds. Thank you for the federal funds. Thank you for helping to save our jobs! Thank, Thank you for the federal funds! This ad was paid for with official funds from the office of Congressman Michael F.Q. San Nicolas. You don't need to work, but keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replay. And I'll be around. life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. Here at Nimitz Towers, we're a large-scale rental complex. We have over 20 employees, and when the pandemic hit, our concerns were people not being able to work, loss of revenue and income, and luckily, Due to PPP, we were able to keep all our employees employed, working. We were able to provide services, maintenance, and cleanliness for the building and the operation. Also, the rental assistance program helped us stay solvent during the pandemic and helped us keep the attendance in place. We're thankful for Congressman San Nicholas advocating for these funds on our behalf in Washington, D.C. If you have any concerns about any federal issues, feel free to contact your congressman's office. Thank you for the federal funds. 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 Paid for with official funds from the office of Congressman Michael F.Q. San Nicolas. Let us know what's up on our KOM News WhatsApp tip line at 671-727-0094. Share information about what's happening in your town on Guam or the CNMI and what you want us to know. Reach us on WhatsApp at 671-727-0094.
Welcome back. 2023 Gov Guam budget hearings continue at the legislature with the Guam Community College first up to bat. GCC is requesting $21.3 million, an increase of $1.2 million over last year's budget allocation, primarily due to higher personnel retirement and insurance costs. President Mary Okada says the school has also taken advantage of more than $12 million in federal funding over the last two years for student financial assistance and a variety of other needs. This funding has been used to upgrade air conditioning systems, air purifiers, personal protective equipment and cleaning supplies, instructional equipment, certification for distance learning, laptops and MIFIs, and most importantly, for counseling services for students and employees to support their emotional and mental well-being. The federal funding has been extended through June 2023, and Okada says the school is well on its way to expanding all of the federal resources. Senators also held a budget hearing on the Guam Academy Charter Schools. They're asking for an allotment of $7,500 per student for the next school year, which is 1,300 or 20% more than the current year. Education Committee Chairperson Talena Nelson asked each school how much would go toward teachers pay, starting with Island Academy Charter Schools' Helen Nishihara. I can go down the line and ask each charter school how much are you going to invest in the teacher's pay out of that $1,300? Part of the pay had a lot to do with some of the benefits too, um, to help with the insurance costs, so that's one of it. And the average increase would be about, I don't think anyone here was more than 2,000 in the increase. Um, but there was none less than 800. So even if I gave 35 teachers a $1,550 $1, increase, which is close to your $2,000 amount, that still gives you $54,250. So out of the $1 million, you're only going to spend roughly $10,000 plus $54,250. That's $64,000 out of the or close to $1 million that you'll be receiving. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's equitable to the teacher. And there are currently four charter schools currently in operation on Guam. United Airlines held its Guam Ready Media discussion earlier today to support the return of the island's tourism economy. Daniel Perez has the details. Taking great strides towards normalcy, United Airlines is beefing up its services and eyeing the return of one of Guam's top tourism markets. Managing Director for Airport Operations for United Airlines Asia Pacific, Sam Shinohara. We feel like there's some traveling opportunity for Japanese customers to come back to Guam. And so we're adding uh, four additional flights a week uh, into the island in June. And we'll be having uh, 11, 11 frequencies uh, a week between Guam and Narita. And we feel like uh, having a morning departure, a middle uh, of the day departure, and an evening departure really gives a united uh, travel pattern uh, that will give the customers the best options to come to Guam. Shina R added that with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention now designating the island as low risk for COVID-19, and with the vast majority of Japan's population fully vaccinated, now is the perfect time to bring them back to Guam. He also confirmed that United Airlines Guam is working to fully restore its network to what it was before COVID-19. We're looking at a full restoration of our network. Uh, we're back up to daily flights between Guam and uh, the Philippines. In fact, we added two flights a week uh, between uh, the Palau and Manila. And so we've, we've climbed up to what our normal service is into Manila already. Uh, so we're really happy with that. We're always looking for opportunities. Uh, at this juncture, we're focused, uh, laser focused on restoring our network to pre-pandemic levels. For now, United Airlines is focusing its sales efforts and promotions in Japan to entice more Japanese visitors to experience the holiday spirit of our island. The first handful that we get is going to be very, very significant. Uh, you know, as I tell everybody, uh, their visitation is the most important because they will go back home uh, and they will help us tell the Guam story. And so, you know, whether it's 5, 10, 20 or 100, uh, it's going to be the most important group that we're uh, welcoming uh, into the island. Daniel Perez reporting for KUAM News. Turning to education, summer school will not be required for some 27,400 Guam GDOE students, according to Superintendent John Fernandez, who was recently on KUAM's The Link. Move further, you know, uh, to, to mandate it at this particular point. Through the course of the, um, the um, you know, this, this quarter, as we assess students, uh, the, the teachers are, are well aware 
that what we are trying to do is make sure we identify students who are in need of, um, of that additional instructional time because we want them to come to school. We wanna work with their parents, uh, make sure that all the supports are, are available so that when summer school begins, uh, they are um, gonna be able to participate. If you're a parent, you can sign up your kid for summer school with their respective school counselors. And at Central Precinct Command this morning, Senator Talena Nelson presented a resolution to the men in blue recognizing and honoring the Guam Police Department precincts for their service to the people of Guam. We wanted to give a recognition to all of your officers in the Sinahanya Precinct, and it says to commend you for your courageous deeds and your dedicated service to our island and for your enviable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of the people of Guam. The senator also visited the Tamuning Tuman Precinct, Dededo Precinct, and Agat Precinct, where she presented the officers with the same certificate honoring their contribution to the community. And stay tuned up next, Dave Delgado, with your roundup of local sports. And still to come, our Giving Every Tuesday Spotlight. Keep it here. If you really want to find out what you're made of, you can forget the personality tests and social media quizzes. Because the only way you're ever going to know is by heading into the big, wild, raging, so damn beautiful it hurts world and finding out for yourself. Were you born to follow a path or were you born free? These are the things we thought about when we made the new Grand Cherokee. Made for what you're made of. like infinite time loop thing. I'm reliving the same day over and over again. I get to do whatever I want. Plus, Taco Bell's nacho fries never leave the menu. She's violating the nacho fries limited timeline. Does that happen every day? Let's dip. Try her now. What's happening? Let's get spicy. Mobile Smiles just got bigger and better. Get more Smiles points for every gallon of fuel you purchase. Or get more miles with United Mileage Plus. Register your Smiles card online to start redeeming awards today. At guam.mobilesmiles.com KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Guam wrestler Ethan Agagi is making one last run at the Olympic Games in Paris scheduled for 2024. Just being there at the Olympic qualifier event and seeing the opposition and seeing what could have been and um, weighing my possibilities and of course seeing Kayla Aquino qualify, you know, making history for Guam. That was super inspiring. And, um, you know, one last run, it's not a long cycle, two years at most, and, you know, why not? I don't want to be remembered as someone who didn't give it my all. And when I look back at my story, my what I've done, I don't want to have any regrets. Ethan is preparing for the Oceania Championship set for June here on island. Agagi will be wrestling in a heavier weight class than his previous competitions. Looking back on Tunisia, I'm, I'm bumping up in weight class. So from 57 kilos, which is 125, I'm going to be going up to 65 kilos, which is 143. Um, no strain on my body. I'm not getting any younger. So it's definitely a sigh of relief, you know, just worrying about getting better at wrestling. You know, I, I've traveled all around the world and seeing those venues, the different countries, you know, having that, that comfortability of, you know, I can run a pay less or wherever and get what I need, what I feel comfortable with. And of course, wrestling ho at home in front of fans um, where I've been homegrown, it, there's nothing like it. You know, there's a lot of pride that goes into it. Ethan was on island for two and a half weeks 
before leaving back to Virginia today. Ethan wrapped up his fifth season coaching at Virginia Tech. After June's competition, Agagi will be focusing on the 2022 World Wrestling Championships to be held in Serbia in September. Back in Virginia, I have I printed out um, a piece of paper and I have it in the gym. I have it at my home gym. Um, pretty much, how do you want to be remembered? Redemption. And that, that's basically the theme coming in to uh, 2024 in this last Olympic run, making my last run my best run. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. I have a phone. I have no TV. Ooh, TV on phone. Get live TV on your phone or any device with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch live channels or stream from your favorite apps on any device, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, more savings. All for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, TV on phone. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. For this week's Giving Every Tuesday feature, a newly established academy is hosting a food drive for the month to help those in need. Giving Every Tuesday is brought to you by Jay Goodman, a happiness company. Jay Fresh Academy recently opened in Dededo and is providing a new opportunity for those in the hair industry who wish to refine their skills. According to instructor Daniel Gorwal, upon opening, one of the things the academy wanted to do is give back to the community. Whether it's normally uh, doing haircuts for the homeless, uh, back to school haircuts for underprivileged. And while people do need haircuts, they also understand that people need food. In fighting hunger here on Guam, we partnered up with the Catholic Social Services. And uh, the whole idea was to be able to provide a place uh, and a, a reason for people to give uh, goods and uh, that, not just food, but also. We're taking diapers and, you know, some cleaning supplies, whatever is on the approved list. And so, uh, originally, the idea with opening a beauty school is because there's a waiting list for people to go into our industry. And so we thought, well, instead of them waiting, um, you know, we would, we would be able to offer a school that uh, we're very affordable. We're also very flexible in that I, I also have part-time students. So we have a full-time students that go during the day, and then we have students that come in uh, from four to eight. Gerwald said items like Calrose rice, canned meat and veggies, baby formula, baby diapers sizes four, five, and six, adult diapers, and also toiletries are some of the things that are needed. They can drop them off here at the school. Uh, we do have uh, partner businesses that are also accepting uh, you'd have to contact us and you know we can give you that information because it's um, there's just a few that have kind of stepped up and said, sure, we'll put a box at our... But the most convenient would be just drop it off here at the school at the Daily Plaza. We just want to see Guam get better. You know, instead of complaining about, you know, the potholes and whatever law just came on the books that is to use of no one, we want to be able to do positive steps to make a change here on Guam and help people that really need it. If you wish to donate to the food drive and help them deliver, a sizable bundle. Contact Stay Fresh Academy at 671-632-3774 or stop by the Academy located in the Daily Plaza in Dededo, next to the old flea market. 
Giving Every Tuesday is brought to you by Jay Goodman, a happiness company. All right, thanks, Joan. And in case you missed it, this morning, Guam's own Jason Jay had the audience swaying with his performance of his original tune, Midnight, on NBC's American Song Contest. Jason needs our help to move on to the semifinals. We all need a vote, and here to give you a rundown on how to do just that is our victorious Falana. All right, so here's how we put Jason J into the finals. You have got the vote. So you can use TikTok, NBC app, or NBC.com. Let's go ahead and vote on TikTok. So open up TikTok. Go ahead and search for American Song Contest. Boom. Right there. Click on that. And then there you go. The voting page comes up. And then you find Jason J. Nope, we don't need about the other guys. Jason J, Guam. Vote all the way up to 10. Go all the way down, submit all votes. Yes, uh, pick where you're voting from. Of course, voting from Guam, submit all votes. And boom, we'll vote on TikTok. Let's go vote on NBC app. So open up your NBC app. Wait for it to load. We search for American Song Contest, but it's right there. So hit vote now. Wait for that to pop up. Same thing. So I click on Jason J. And boom, it's a wheel, so we turn it all the way up to 10. And boom. There you go. We voted for JCJ. You guys go out there and vote. Uh, voting closes tomorrow, Wednesday at 12 in the afternoon. So go and vote for JCJ. Be by JCJ. Thanks, Vic. And you can watch the rebroadcast at 7 p.m. on NBC TV 8, so make sure you vote. And we wrap up the show with your birthday shout outs. Here's Jason Salas. Happy birthday on Tuesday, April 19th to Edward Cabrera. Happy birthday to my favorite uncle, AKA Uncle Ed. Love your favorite niece, Lori, and the entire Cabrera family. Birthday number 10 wishes to Nathaniel Pinzon. And happy birthday, Nate Nate, from all of your families. Plural, more than one. That is awesome. You got a lot of people who care about you, Nate Nate. Enjoy your special day, they say, and adding, we love you. And belated birthday wishes going out to Jenny Castro, born on the 18th. Happy birthday, sister. Love Lori, Joel, and the family. And Thomas J. Parrish Cruz, also born on the 18th. Happy belated ninth birthday, Thomas J. Love always, your family. You guys are awesome. Edward, Nate Nate, Jenny, and Thomas J, we wish you the very best day ever because it's your birthday. You can be part of our Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by checking out KOM.com. That's our show. Thank you, and please stay safe, Guam and the Cinemai.